This is Ethan Klein on the H3 podcast. He had Mike Lindell on. So I want to listen to this, see what they had to say to each other. It's bound to be bizarre. And while we listen, we're going to play some Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm just kind of going through battling. So anyway, let's check this out, shall we? See what, uh, see how this went. Oh, yeah. Mike, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Oh, can you hear? They got a, a, a clap track. Love it. I guess he can't hear me. I love oh, it. Hello, how you doing? Good oh, hey, you. thank you so much for joining us. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Clap track. Let me say, first of all, I absolutely love the, the set or the office or wherever you are. I mean, the lion and the Jesus with the thorn is just, it's a phenomenal, and you're, you're just, it's framed up so perfectly. I mean, it's gorgeous. I love it. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's one of my, one of the artists I have on uh, on mystore.com. It's one of these. On- mystore.com. Oh, my God, dude. He's already plugging his junk. Entrepreneurs out there. She's a painter, and uh, she painted it for me, and we have used it ever since. Wow. It's amazing. Wow. Well, I, I love that, so thank you. Uh, anyway, thank you for calling in. You know, Mike, I, I'm a fan of yours. I find your story extremely inspiring, and all the things that you've been through I, I kind of just want to ask you some questions about uh, about who you are, really, as a person. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one, I understand that you got the idea. But this is going to be really difficult with Eris. I, I haven't been training much with her. And she's really weak, so maybe I should equip some materia to her to, I don't know, this, this is just going to be hard. Really, as a person. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one. I understand that you got the idea uh, to make a pillow in your dreams. Is that right? right? Is that when it still came? Right. God gave him the message, right? And when it came to you? Yeah, it was a couple things. You know, I always had problems with pillows. Even going back to I was 16 years old and bought a bought a, the most expensive pillow, a down pillow back in 1976 yeah. for like $80. And then, But then I had a dream and... Uh, um, a dream of, uh, I believe it was right from God. And then I would actually have even, even conscious things. I believe God just give me this download mm. of what a pillow should be. God gave him a download. Be. I wanted it to be adjustable and all these different things. And uh, God gave him a download of what type of pillow he wanted. And he wanted it to be da- uh, adjustable. Wow. Okay. It was just one little miracle after another, but it took about 10 months to invent. So it took 10. What was the dream that you had? I'm curious. The dream was more, it was, it was a, an adjustable pillow. Like I would, my pillows would always go flat. I'd use my arm and fold them. And, and uh, the dream actually, and, and even the name came in a dream, my pillow. Um, really? You know, yeah, I was going, I, and then I thought, well, that's kind of cool. I kind of woke up going, hey, where's my pillow? And I thought that'd be wow. a good thing. Honestly, kind of a stupid name. My pillow came to him in a dream, and I guess that was God giving him the message. Is that right? <laughs> And, but was the pillow? Yeah, br- God downloaded pillow schematics PDFs right into his brain. Absolutely, Ashley ninety four TTV. And and the reason he needed the schematics because pillow technology is really really complicated. And you can't just like understand how this is done. You have to like have the schematics for it, right? Totally, 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 absolutely. Where's my pillow? And I thought that'd be wow. enough. Good day for- and, but was the pillow. pillow brought down by like an archangel or something, or was it just kind of? I love it. That's great. Of like a um, nebulous no, kind no, of concept. No, I think mo- most of it was even conscious. You know, I I did a, a lot of praying, but it was uh, you no, know, it wasn't brought down. It was more of a, it was more of a, um, um, you know, I guess uh, kind of you know when you're dreaming between the your before you're waking up, kind of that semi-conscious dream. Absolutely, and, yeah. and I. Pillows were always a problem for me. You'd wake up with a, you know, a ne- sore neck or maybe your arms asleep. And, right. And, uh, and the first thing, one of the things was it just kept coming, you know, to make it adjustable, I guess, for the height. You right. Know? Everybody- God really just wanted him to make an adjustable pillow for people because people needed that. Right. Okay. Everybody wants soft, but we want something. We want, we want it to stay there. So and that true. Was- you know, you know exactly. Sleep is about sleep is about height and temperature with your neck, and 
you know, it doesn't matter what sleep position you want to be parallel to your bed, the distance from your head to your bed. So right. some pillows are too thin, some are too thick. Right. Uh, some some collapse. You know, That's a down to downer. It down's a downer. It means down, right? <laughs> this is insane, dude. Is it just me, or is this absolutely batshit insane? Absolutely. That's so true. But <laughs> so like it's so the idea that this was some kind of um, divine intervention. Sounds yeah. silly, but I'll say this. The fact that you took a pillow concept and built it into this, uh, I, I, the reports say that it was worth hundreds of millions of dollars, the company. Um, that, to me, says divine intervention. Because who makes oh, a yeah. pillow and grows the company to that size? I love it, dude. Now he's just making fun of him, right? It's fantastic, man. This is insane. It, it, you know what's insane to me? That Mike Lindell buys his own nonsense here. Right, right. Well, and see, you know, when I invented my pillow, too, you got, everyone's got to remember, I was also an addict, a crack cocaine addict. And, yeah. and, and so you have this parallel track of addiction. And uh, when I quit everything by the grace of God, all my addictions on January 16, 2009, I spent the next two years, you know, during that whole time, the box stores had turned down my pillow, kind of like now, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I Okay, I don't know. Like, maybe they turned them down back then because it just wasn't big enough. And it was just a stupid pillow. Like, who really gives a shit about a pillow? But now they're turning them down because Mike is a complete scumbag. And he's he kind of played his hand on that, right? I had no box stores and no place. So I did home shows and fairs for almost 10 years, or Whoa. I guess seven years. I would go town to town and, and sell the pillows at home shows and fairs. Well, then when we, I told my friends and family, I said, you know what? We should make an infomercial on TV. And I said, uh, we all pulled our money in the summer of 2011. And it was very <laughs> interesting because um, I was afraid to talk in front of people. I, you know, I was like, had this fear of rejection and, and um, you certainly so overcome I, that. Well, I, I don't, have a problem talking in front of people. As a matter of fact, I love talking in front of people, but being a salesman, oh, I can't. I cannot do it. I cannot be a salesman. It bothers me too much. Wow, I just died. How am I going to get through the others with Eris if I can't get through this one? Eris is maxed out on her level and everything. Like, I don't know what, I don't know how to beat this. This is really hard. I was trying to kind of 100% the game here, and this is a necessary part of it, but this is really, really hard with Eris. Ah. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah. very much afraid of. Sorry, step back here. I was afraid to talk in front of people. I, you know, I was like had this fear of rejection, and and um, you certainly so overcome I, that. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah. very much afraid of talking. That's a that's, by the grace of God, right? So um, that's a miracle in itself. But, um, <laughs> I knew it. I knew he was going to say that. Right. I, in in my book, I think it was uh, I put it down. It's like you don't get rejected if you don't talk, right? So exactly. I think people that have a fear of public speaking. It's like you know a fear of being rejected. And but anyway, we went to do our reads. My just a friend of mine and my the night before we were doing this infomercial, and this producer from California, he's he texts the other guy. He said, "This is the worst guy I've ever seen. He'll never make it on TV." Well, that, that, like everything Lindell says is a lie. Don't don't believe anything he says, okay? He says the sky is blue, double check to be sure, for real. The next day I went down there and there's the audience and I guess got stage fright and I it took me like um, oh, I don't know, an hour to do one read. And finally I said, can we just get rid of the teleprompter and bring in a table like I did at the shows and do it naturally? It's like speaking and tongue I, in a way. Yeah, yeah, and I did that. Like speaking in tongues, okay. And and uh, yeah, this was like a shield from the audience. I mean, it was like, just like I did at the shows, wow. it was kind of on autopilot. And wow. then it aired October 7th of 2011 in the middle of the night um, and I had like 10 employees and 40 days later, I had 500 employees. Wow. We From the one number one commercial. Yeah. I'm the number one infomercial in the world. Now the infomercials are a half hour long. It was a half hour show. Um, but we took in a hundred million dollars in six months. What? But at the end of the Holy six shit. months, but at the end of the six months, I was six. This is what I wonder. How do you become a pillow mogul like that? And why is this guy immune to my shots? I don't understand it. That's kind of weird. How do you become a billionaire as a pillow salesman, honestly? Like, that's crazy, right?
million dollars in debt. Oh, that's I, not... And I don't use a bank. I've never used a bank, so I was always. Do you stuffing it in your pillows? Is that what's happening? <laughs> Hard work and build up on, my money. Mike. Hold on, hold on. Well, how do you run a business without a bank? He has a bank. He's full of shit. I've seen video. In fact, I have video of him talking about owning or um, being kicked out of his bank or whatever because he's a whatever. So he's just completely full of it here. The, this was you got credit from vendors. You know, you had credit from vendors. Well, what do you do and with I, all the nonsense? He's full of it. Cash and all the money. No, like you you buy more infomercials. So anyway, at the end of that, it was six million dollars. He's full of shit, and you can tell he's full of shit because he wants to move on to another subject. But well, where do you send the money from? What are you talking about? So if you're if you're buying an infomercial, where do you send them the money? From? Dude, how is it that like what what's going on with this guy? He's immune to everything that I'm doing. Why? Why is he immune? I don't understand. This is weird. So anyway, at the end of that, it was six million dollars. But where do you send the money from? What are you talking about? So if you're if you're buying an infomercial, where do you send them the money from? Where do you send them the money? Well, you got to pay for the infomercial, right? Yeah, you pay for the commercials and you yeah. buy them like a month out. So do you pay them in cash? By the what's that? Do you pay them in cash? No, he's lying. No, you had credit. These are your credits you have out. Okay, and how do you pay your credit card? He's completely full of it. And um, H3 knows that. What's his name? Oh, my God. I'm, I'm suddenly forgetting the dude's name. Ethan. Ethan Klein is his name. Jesus. I don't know why I couldn't remember for a second there. Yeah. Ethan knows he's full of it here. Up there. Okay. So at the end of six months, I owed $6 million. Oh, what shit. What I'm trying to uh, okay. say here, even though I took in $100 million, I lost $6 million, Okay. Right. And, then, and But what happened is... I learned from that rather than just go, oh, I'm done. You know, I made a mistake and all that. But I learned from 2012. So I took everything in house at my pillow. We do our own marketing. We do our own advertising. We do our own. Uh, that's why you see promo codes, 1 800 numbers. I, I started tracking every individual spot because we don't brand. I said, if that spot needs to either break even or make a little bit. So by doing, by bringing it all in house, we were able to recover from that. And uh, get to where we are today, where we've sold over 80 million my pillows. What? 80 million my pillows? Is that true? I'm not convinced of anything Lindell says. In fact, I'm very confident that like Lindell like lies constantly. Nearly everything out of his mouth is a lie. Wow, I just died. This is really, really difficult to do with Eris. I I don't know that I can do it. Over 80 million my pillows. What? I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe. That's a lot of uh, pillows. Jesus Christ, that is amazing. <laughs> um, I'm so confused about the no bank thing. Do you use a bank now or never? I love that he's like really zeroing in on this. This is fantastic. Ever. Well, you had to know I didn't borrow from a bank. I didn't, I didn't borrow from the bank. Oh, but you have you a know? bank account. Yeah, you have a bank. Oh, Everything's okay, got to okay. go through a bank. He did borrow from a bank, actually. In fact, I have video of him talking about this. He borrowed money from a bank. He says he didn't borrow from a bank. This is June 19th, 2022 at Greg Locke's church. My pillow was just, like I say, a blip on the radar. My sister says, pray for favor. And I had uh, these guys that st stole my company. And I owed, I had to come up with 30000 cash. Make that long story short, I went and met with eight, eight C's. I come in there and there's... CEO, CFO, CEO, um, COO, those types of people, you know, a board basically saying he met with the board of a company. OK, they're all dressed in suits. Remember, anybody that wore a tie and a suit and ate with more than two forks, I was afraid of. Right. And, and uh, but I walk in this room to borrow this thirty thousand dollars. I walk in, they're all wearing suits and I start telling my story. These guys took my company. I need thirty thousand. I'll pay you back forty thousand. Interesting, huh? Did you catch that? He said he borrowed money from somebody. Huh. Curious. I said I used to be a crack addict, and, and, uh, but I'm going to do these home shows. I'm going to get back my company, and I'm going to help people in addiction. The guy, their CFO goes, when did you quit crack? And I said, last Thursday. <laughs> and they, <laughs> they go. And uh, four of them got up, looked for the cameras, and left the room. The other four stayed there, and they ended up doing it it's just because with, uh, but they end up doing it, and I did end up paying them back uh, a couple months later. But So anyway, the point is that Mike Lindell, 
did borrow money. He did. He says he didn't. He's lying. But he's got this bizarre obsession with convincing everybody that he did all this himself without borrowing any money. But for what it's worth, that's not even what Ethan was talking about. Ethan was saying, how did you pay your credit card bill without a bank? Did he keep the money in the pillows? What? How did he, did he pay it in cash? You can't legally, to my knowledge, have that much cash without like accounting for it and stuff. It's very complicated to have that level of cash because of the IRS and stuff like that. A whole bunch of complicated stuff. Oh, I, that's what I, I, yeah. What I, just, I mean is, I didn't back then. You know, I was the banks wouldn't borrow me a bunch of money. What I mean is, it, I didn't use it. a bank for a credit line. So you got have, it. He is so full of shit. Have, oh, oh, and by the way, credit line is borrowing money. That's what you're doing with a credit card. It's borrowing money. So I don't want to hear any of this nonsense about he didn't borrow anything from anybody. Yes, you did. Vendors, you have vendors you buy your product from or your parts to make your pillows, like your fabric. So you, they give you like 30 or 40 day credit, or I mean, so 30 or 60 day credit. So then you make your products and then you sell them and then you're- I got open. it, I got it. You know, it's like any business. Michael, he is so full of shit. I wanna, I, I wanna ask you a question. And I, I, I have also smoked crack, so I feel like I can- <laughs> I love it, dude. I, I have not actually smoked crack before. Somebody brought crack to me and I kind of smoked it, but I'm not I don't even think it was crack. I think they were lying. Um because it didn't do literally anything to me. So I mean, who knows? It's like any business. Mike, I wanna no. I, I wanna ask you a question and I I I I've also smoked crack, so I feel like I can empathize in a bit. But right. I do want to say, I wonder, you had this tremendous energy, this tremendous drive when you were making the MyPillow business, the MyPillow franchise. Do you right. think that smoking crack helped give you the energy and motivation you needed at the time? <laughs> Did crack help you? Oh, my God. Okay, for the record, crack is bad. It does not help. It only hinders. Seriously, don't, don't do it. I, this is a funny joke, but yeah, don't, don't do it, okay? No, because if you did crack and then you also did cocaine, have you done both? Mm hmm. Okay, well, cocaine's. A I have done coke. Again, I, I talked about this earlier. They're not good, they're deeply destructive to your life. Don't do them, okay? For real. It only damages you in a variety of ways. It's not productive or good or helpful, it's only destructive. And then you also did cocaine. Have you done both? Mm hmm. Okay. Well, cocaine's a different animal than crack. Right. Crack cocaine, it's very paranoid. It's not a social drug. Oh. You peek out windows. You can do anything on crack oh, no. other than be paranoid. So yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it depends. Uh, that's close enough, I suppose. Can right. I ask you, why did you so, transition? So, so hold on. Go ahead. So, so, so back. So back then, I was a very, addiction affects everybody, not just people that are destitute in the street. I Absolutely agreed. I appreciate Mike is saying this. I was a very functioning addict before crack addiction with cocaine, alcohol, and everything. Just a functioning addict. And uh, um, did, that give, uh, did that give me energy? I, have this, I probably have more energy now than okay. I did back then. Wow. You know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but what, so... I understand that you started with cocaine and then tra transitioned to crack. Well, that was what what caused that transition. Yeah, it was one fateful night in uh, around year two thousand, and I was a cocaine addict for a couple decades, and uh, also gambler, uh, um, um, alcoholic. But uh, there was probably there wasn't any cocaine, and all they had was crack. It might have been something like that. I don't even remember the first time, mm -hmm. uh, but it was somewhere around two thousand. You don't remember the first time you did crack or coke or whatever? Um, okay. I'm a little skeptical of that. Most people remember the first time they did certain drugs, but all right. I just won. That was really, really difficult. I can't believe that I I won that. And, and crack is, takes you down so fast, and it was... Mm. Uh, I owned a bar then. I, I, I was always an entrepreneur, and I had a bar, and... Like I say, crack cocaine is not a social drug. You you get paranoid. You tweak out windows. Right. And it sounds like he's talking about meth. Um, 
I guess if you get really, really bad on crack, it probably does that to you. But the crack high is really, really short lived. So. So I couldn't. I the meth high lasts like days. And then the crack high lasts like minutes or, or maybe at the most an hour, depending on how much you have. Um, and you can buy it in very, very small amounts. Like you can buy like five dollars worth and just it's like one hit basically drug you you get paranoid you tweak out windows right and so i couldn't you know you got to be it was very hard for me to run a bar then sure. because uh, on crack you can't yeah. take you down you'd want to stay away from people on crack, so that, you know <laughs> i gotta and, say it sounds like you probably had some crazy nights though doing all that like you probably had some like memorable nights <laughs> He's he's asking Mike to glorify it, basically, which I denounce and detest. Uh, it, it, these things should not be glorified. And Mike may know that. We'll see. We'll see what Mike says here. Oh, I don't know. I mean, uh, the uh, I think, uh, I, I, you know, I think back now and all I could think is that the, the bad would have taught it to right. destroy all my friends. And you right. think of the I appreciate that very much. I really appreciate that Mike is speaking out against it. Destruction. Right. Um, if I go back to, uh, you know, I kind of think, you know, if you had these other addictions where I was a functioning addict, maybe it took crack because it was, I couldn't I couldn't control that. Right. You can't control. So maybe it was, you know, you look back, maybe it was a blessing that, hey, you think you can control these drugs. How about this one? You know, right. God. And, yeah. Like I said, I've said this a few times now. You can't control the drug. You think you can. The drug is going to control you. Every time. Um, and when did you, you know, find God, when did you find God? At what point during your journey did you, or were you always well, a Christian, a good Christian? I soul? always, I always, I was always pursuing pursuing God. I would like I, my friends and I after the bars would close, we'd be we'd be doing you know maybe doing drugs or drinking or whatever, and I'd be I'd be telling him about revelation that I read when I was in jail in the Bible. I would always read. Oh my God! So he's always been a Jesus freak. The jail. You know, I'd say, God, get me out of this, and I'll never do this again. But I would sit there and tell them about uh, God and the Bible, and they would they would find the Lord, and uh, we and quit everything. And I, my friends are going, Mike, we're losing friends. I'm going. I was me trying to convince mm. myself. Then you seen me on TV, and when I quit everything on January 16, 2009. I thought that was the day I was a complete born again Christian, but it was such a different life that from being free to these addictions uh, that I thought it was that day. Well, my actually, it wasn't until February 18th of 2017 that I gave my life completely to Jesus Christ. You're very and good that, with that. It's so fascinating that he remembers the day he gave his life to Jesus, but doesn't remember the first time he did crack. How about that? It's like everything the guy says is a lie. You know, there's a story he told. Hang on. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Let me let me pull this up. Okay. He went to uh, Greg Locke's church and told a completely different story than he tells anywhere else, right? So June 19th, 2022. Listen to this. I had been up for 14 days with no sleep. and I and That's not true. You die after 11 days. That is the world record before the person died. I come out of the bedroom... And all three of the big drug dealers are standing there, and they're going that they knew of each other, but they had never they had never met. And I go, "What are you guys doing?" They go, um, "We're cutting you off." The one guy says, "T says we're cutting," or Ty says, "We're cutting you off." You've been up for fourteen days, and I'm going, "I've only been up for twelve, you know, whatever." And uh, so the four big drug dealers in the area. Okay, if you don't know how all of this works, there's a you know cities are normally broken up into sections that are controlled by different people. Huntington, West Virginia, where I lived, was controlled by Detroit, the Detroit gangs. And it was split up into sections that were provided with drugs by certain types of people. Um, and apparently, Mike Lindell knew all of those people. Now, those people don't want to be known by anybody. Anybody. If they're known by more than one or two others, they risk being busted when one of the other people is busted. So Mike Lindell did not know the top four people in this these you know in these areas supplying drugs to everywhere. He didn't. This is a lie. But okay, you know what? Let's assume it's true. Go on. And 
they, the, the one guy says he's not getting anybody from anything from my people in there because they all had like sections of the town right there where we were. And so two of them left and he sat and, and he's going to wait me out. He said, how much crack you have left? I showed him what I had left. And he, he sits there in the chair. No, I'm out of crack. And I'm so for his own good, because they saw he was going downhill, they, they didn't want him to go downhill. They said, Mike. We care about your well-being. These are drug dealers from, like, Detroit, from gangs and stuff, right? These drug dealers from gangs said, We care about you, Mike. We don't want to see you hurt yourself anymore. We care about you so much, we're cutting you off for your own good. Does, how does this guy expect anybody to believe a word out of his mouth, honestly? This is insane. The point is, Mike Lindell tells lie after lie after lie. Thought he was addicted to drugs. No, he's addicted to lying. His story is amazing enough. He went from zero dollars to billionaire or, or multimillionaire at the very least. I don't know if he's a billionaire or not. His story is interesting enough. Why does he have to throw in nonsense on top of all of that? Come on. Uh, that I thought it was that day. Well, my... Actually, it wasn't until February 18th of 2017 that I gave my life completely to Jesus Christ. You're very and good that, with dates. You, I, I've noticed you have these very specific dates. How do you remember the specific date like that? My brain well, doesn't were, work that way. Well, you remember dates that change your life, like the right. day you quit everything or the day you fell. Or the day that you did crack for the first time. Well, you remember dates that change your life, like the right. day you quit everything or the day you found our, our Lord Jesus Christ. Is there, any, that, other, is there any other dates that you recall that have that level of impact in your life? Oh, uh, I don't know. You got, you know, people's birthdays. Uh, yeah, uh, birthdays. Anyway. The day you did crack. Tell me that day. He couldn't tell us a second ago. Can you tell us now? When you get, ma when you get married and, and things like that. So um, we have your... I, so I remember our, those two dates. I remember... So you hold know, on one sec. So we uh, have... um. Are you married? Yes. Oh, so married. We, oh, that poor woman. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so we're, so the wife's birthday is a good date to remember. And he shouldn't be saying this stuff on air. This is this could be like could be security questions to open up. Uh, oh my God, what what's the word I'm looking for here? This could be the answers to security questions to open up accounts and stuff like that. He shouldn't be saying what the answers are to this. And then also, yeah. is the anniversary also a good date to remember? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And birthdays. Well, birthdays are any dates that you you know that you think. I mean, I can remember when you when you have a complete lifestyle change, you're going to remember January 16, yeah, 2000. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I quit everything. Is or, that like maybe you, know? you might say it's like your personal 9/11? And I don't mean to compare it. What is this dude's deal, really? Why do you keep doing? This is so weird. That's your personal 9/11. What? What an odd thing to say. But just how the date, we remember the date. I go, oh, 9-11, I remember. So maybe it's yeah, like that. Yeah, you probably remember where you were when it happened, too. Of course, how could I forget? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. Uh, things like that. But I'm very good with numbers. I took calculus in eighth grade. And oh, ninth wow. grade. He took calculus in eighth grade. No, he didn't. They don't teach calculus in eighth grade, to my knowledge. I, I'm sorry. I don't believe him. I just don't. So I'm After all the lies this guy has told, I'm sorry, man. You're, you have lost all credibility, complete credibility with me. I mean, I used to be a professional card counter. I mean, that was another thing. Are you kidding? Really? Okay, I got to write these down. This is just getting wackier and wackier. Mike Lindell, crazy claims. I was a professional card counter. <laughs> Come on, dude. Just tell the truth. Your story is crazy enough. No. So, um, go fast forwarding to today... With your incredible uh, story, now things I hate. I, I hate to see what's happening to you in the midst of all these people trying to attack you, trying to sue you. I saw um, that you were having like clearance sales on some of your factories, selling off some of the extra goods, and I absolutely hate to see that. I don't know. Do you, it, has God abandoned you? Where is? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Where is God? Because he's he's guided you to this tremendous place. And now I, I don't I just I don't know why he would leave you in this in this horrible oh, he position. Didn't, oh, he didn't he didn't leave me. Absolutely not. Uh, what happened? So did did Mike leave him or what happened was, uh, as you all know, this uh, I was the media as a darling and the media started attacking me. 
after I, I met Donald Trump in the summer of 2016, I had never voted in my life. Right. Yeah. So it's Satan that's getting him, right? Invited me to meet him on August 15, 2016. And I walked oh, we, in there. That's another date we remember. Yeah, because when I remember met... significant because yeah. you don't know. Get him. I think these dates he's he's throwing out are nonsense. I don't believe that they're even accurate. I think he's just throwing dates out there. We remember. Yeah, because I when remember met... significant because yeah. you don't know get invited by a presidential candidate. And he invited me in there and asked me, you know, you make everything in the U.S. He had all these questions for me. And I said, yeah, how's that working out? I'm going to bring the manufacturing back. And then I told him about it, it was just him and I. And I said, I said, yeah, I said, I used to be a crack addict. And I set up this Re Lindell Recovery Network to help addicts for free. And he said, well, I'm going to stop the drugs pouring in. And it was just a meeting. I, I left there. He had no agenda other than to find out about uh, manufacturing in the U.S. I left there. I talked to his employees, a lot of them, and I came back to Minnesota, and every one of his employees said, wow, he's, be a, he's a good boss, good man, and uh, he says what he, he says. He, um, he uh, says what he says. He's helped him out individually. Yeah. Totally, totally. Trump helping people of his own free will. Uh, t uh, absolutely. I believe it. Yeah. And so I went back to Minnesota, and I did a press release saying, hey, I met Donald Trump. And then the media attacked me. I didn't even say what oh, we talked about. See, that's so they not started right. attacking then. But in 2020, when when I was given evidence in January. Do you recall the date? In January? Of whatever yeah, this January, day was in 2020? January 9th. When January. I, got I, I think he's making these dates up. He's making these up, right? I'm so confident that he's just making this stuff up off the top of his head. Nine. Thank you. When I got... But in January, in November and December of 2020, I, th I knew there was something very strange with the elections because I did my own investigation right. and every county had people that voted in that county or state that didn't live there. And I know people are genuinely good people. I couldn't see them marching across and let's go vote for Donald Trump or let's go vote for Biden in another state. OK, mm -hmm. so I so I when I was given my evidence on January 9th. It was it was computer stuff. And I'm going, well, that explains that these people didn't go do that. It was done with computers. So he's repeating the same nonsense that he's repeated in every interview that he's done for the past, I don't know, five, six years or something like that. Like he keeps just so he just keeps saying this stuff over and over and over again. He said this on Jim Baker's program too, word for word. But what I have done since that time. I have said we need to go to paper ballots, hand counted to fix our election platforms. I've worked with Democrats mostly and, and blocking Republicans that block me every day. And what's happened this Wait, summer? Are we, we we're, we're, to, we're loving the Democrats. Is that what I heard? No, I work with them. It's deviation. This is a people problem, not a like I this one nice lady in Georgia, three Democrats and her and her husband got zero votes in her own precinct. Wow. And they, OK, what he's talking about here, this is actually. Uh, kind of real what he's describing this happened where a voting machine was messed up not that it was um like intentionally tampered with which is what mike lindell claimed but that it was uh it was just messed up and you know there was a request to fix it or investigate it and sure enough they discovered there was something going on with it and boom it was recounted and that was the end of the story but lindell wants to turn this whole thing into like a conspiracy when it simply was not they found out it was a programming error so my team we dug into it oh. she really got 3700 votes she went from third place to first place wow. this is for me is about yeah she got zero votes not only in her own county but just period she got zero votes and that was not feasible because uh she voted for herself so obviously there was something not quite right and you know she requested a hand recount she got one and just like that boom they discovered the problem and they corrected it see how that works you can correct problems when you discover that they exist but mike lindell wants to make this whole thing out of it like that you know they're trying to trick you or play a you know they're trying to mess with you or ruin your life or whatever like it's all complete nonsense all of it fixing the election platforms and it's it's always been that what happened was this was summer now the for some reason the media and 
The Democrats wanted these machines gone for two decades. My own Senator Amy Klobuchar, Kamala Harris, but the Republicans... It's Kamala. Kamala Harris. ...have wanted to keep these machines. So, so the re- this- wait, are you, the Republicans are the ones that are championing they're the by, use of these no, corrupt no, no, machines? No, they're, they're... Oh, I love it. They're wanting, they're blocking me from getting, blocking us from going to paper ballots hand counted to get rid of these So the machines. Republicans are no, the no. ones standing in the way of, of... This is good. I love this. ...of our, of our holy project to fix these elections. They, they've been the blocking me. Wow, in a lot of these I didn't states, know that. A lot, states, a lot of these states. Republicans are the problem here. It's, yeah, but, and that we have, I have people in every state. So would you support here. Joe I'm Biden? Gonna go back to, I'm going to go back to your question you said about my pillow. Yeah. So oh, with right. my pillow, in this, this spring, what they did, they came out, they, the media started attacking me again with uh, because they know I want to get rid of these machines. Well, so the what best way to attack that than to go after my pillow? In June, my pillow had an auction. My man, one of my managers from one of my buildings, I have fifteen hundred employees, came up and said, "Mike, we don't have retail anymore. Can we sell off some of this retail equipment and make room for our my pillow two point manufacturing?" I said, "Sure, go ahead and have an auction." Well, I didn't know the whole world would grab and go. Mike Lindell selling off his stuff. He's had oh, an so auction. Oh, so that was a that was a total smear job. Oh, my God. I remember this when uh, Mike Lindell was selling off a whole bunch of his machinery, his his equipment that he uses for like his factories and his box trucks and stuff like that. He's selling all that stuff off. And now he's claiming that he was 100 percent totally. It was an innocent thing. It wasn't like any crazy thing. He wasn't planning anything. It wasn't like he's not going broke. And like he just told us in this previous episode, he's going broke. Why is he like lying about this? Just tell the truth. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. We were just selling it. We were selling some equipment we don't use anymore. And we and to make room for our new manufacturing. Then, then American Express. Uh, then all these vendors, as the media kept on it, instead of having a hundred and twenty day credit, they say, you know what? Now you only get thirty days. Now you only get thirty days. In the meantime, the lawyers That's were charging my pillow. Dude. God, I love how uh, he's just he's humoring him here when it's obvious complete nonsense. In the in the in the meantime, the, excuse the, my the, language. The lawyers are charging out. the lawyers are charging my pillow two million dollars a month. Are you I, and kidding? I said, no, two million a month. Yeah. So I said <laughs> we got to get different. He's just he's messing with him, right? Lawyers, we'll go get them. We've got now they're a couple ten ten times cheaper. And uh, but the media won't let up and they're still attacking and and but we're fine at my well, pillow. Can I, I, just can I get... ask you a question, Mike? Um, huh? I, I'm, I have this concern because uh, Fox News was sued by Dominion and they lost like what well, almost 300 million. Oh, he's talking about his uh, his case with Dominion now. Oh, boy. If Mike is smart, he won't say a word because this is bound to end badly if Mike brings this up. And these guys are also suing. No, it's seven hundred and eighty-seven million. You got to get oh, you oh, get it right. Oh, not even close. So I was I was undervaluing a seven, right. almost a billion. No, the settlement was what? Seven hundred eighty-seven billion. Mil- that was Fox's settlement. Seven hundred eighty-seven million dollars. That's correct. Oh yeah. Wait, are you serious? I'm I'm a hundred percent serious. I don't they miss buy, that. Holy shit! Seven hundred and eighty-seven million. So and now, why did they do that? I well, don't but know. Mike, why they but said. Mike, they're suing you now, and like, what the? This, this. I mean, are we worried about this? What do we do? I mean, I'm. No, I'm the, he should be worried about it. No, they're just, I, no, no. The uh, they're suing. They're suing. You got to understand the lawsuit. The lawsuit. Oh, lay it on me. I got to understand. I'm just not smart enough. Suits like with my pillow and employee owned company. They're suing them, saying that this was a marketing scheme. For, that Mike Lindell, to make money, went out and tried to defame Dominion, Smartmatic, and these machine companies. Well, It absolutely was a marketing scheme, at least to some degree it was. But it's not a really good marketing scheme to make money if we've lost a quarter of a billion dollars. Right. And, uh, well, so- well, of course, he didn't expect to, but just like attempted murder is a crime, it may not be actual murder, but attempted murder is still a thing. It's still illegal to attempt something. Even if you didn't succeed, they're, they're suing you for defamation, though, right? They're suing to defamate, but their thing behind it is, why did you defame? You did it because you wanted to make money. That's what their whole lawsuit's oh. about. Well, they're trying to include um, 
uh, my pillow in this lawsuit. That's the reason why they're trying to prove this one specific thing right now. They want to prove that Mike Lindell was trying to do it as a marketing campaign for my pillow. And either way, Lindell is in bad shape. He's going to be sued hard one way or another. He's going to lose a lot simply because he defamed them. But aside from defaming them, they're trying to include my pillow in this as well. And they're going to own my pillow by the end of it, in my opinion. Uh, and and, uh, and you think... know what? That's a big deflection. Understand that. I have the Lindell offense on my Linda, the plan I have to secure our election. I've been funding everything to the tune of $60 million, all the money I had to, to secure our election platforms around the country. I now had <laughs> ran out of money to fund that, to, to, they just helped, to help in all these lawsuits. <laughs> Over here, these uh, the, the 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 only reason my pillow switched lawyers, they're you, you, no one can keep sustaining two million dollars a month lawyers, and uh, and it, it's a lot of money. You don't want I don't want my company to end up uh, losing all their cash because uh, of lawyer bills, you know. And uh, but so Mike, far, I got I have to go back because I just hate all this stuff is happening to you after you've built it up, and I see it sounds like. I don't know if God's left you, but he's certainly not. Dude, I love it. Doing you any favors. Republicans have left you. These these cowards. No, they have Republican. No, you're misconstrued. They're, oh. Republicans have a... oh, he's starting to see the game now. Oh, this is great. Left me. When we get to we we get to states. They're blocking you, an... Mike. Let's call it I'll what it you, is. I'll give you an example. In Arkansas, we go into Arkansas, Cleburne County passes a bill in January, their county said, which every county has the right to, we're not gonna use these machines, we're gonna go to paper ballots, hand count it. Then a Republican there by the name of Kim Hammers went and passed a bill that if you go to paper ballots in Arkansas, we're gonna defund your county. Mike, the now Republicans, they're, they're, they're against you. They're blocking, oh, they're your, not. what you're doing uniparty. is so it's important. Very few. It's the uniparty, the Republicans just Dude, I love it. He is really laying into Mike here. Voted in August, passed a resolution, the RNC, paper ballots, hand counted, okay. same day voting. So there's level. some rats in the here. midst. I'm telling you, there's these are a few key politicians like Crooked Brad Rassenberger down in Georgia, okay. Robert Buffs in Wisconsin. You can't say all Republicans. It's a few. So they who are these blockers. people, though? Are they underground, like, Democratic operatives? No, Brad, Brad Rassenberger. You know who he is. Raffensperger. Raffensperger. And the reason he hates this guy is because he's a good Republican. R Brad Raffensperger is a good Republican who has done everything that he could within the bounds of the law to protect the Constitution and to uphold what the Republican Party wanted. Trump wanted Brad Raffensperger to straight up break the law, and he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He didn't. That That is honor right there. In my opinion, that's honor. He is the Secretary of State of Georgia. Robin Voss, the Speaker of the House in Wisconsin. Oh, that's the guy. Guys, that's the guy doing the bullshit lawsuit against Trump, right? The one in Georgia. Yeah, yeah the they, one I'm where they're talking about. Dude, that one, that was so states. crazy. Like, they have a phone call recording of him being like, can I get 7,000 more votes? Yeah, that's him. And like, so what? 11,780 votes. And he, that, that was direct election interference, what was being attempted there. And uh, I'm sure Ethan knows that. I don't understand what's significant about that. Georgia's out of control. You're, 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 now you're being facetious. That call, that call Donald me. Trump had, Donald Trump had in. Oh, I love it, dude. I love it. In front of him, all the stuff right from the Secretary of State. What about these 8,000 people here that voted that don't live in Georgia? What about these 11,360 people not eligible? What about these 3,000? Those. Dude, I am, uh, yeah, I'm screwed. I'm dead. I'm dead, right? I'm not going to make it. Yep, I'm dead. Damn. That, th this is really hard, actually. This is really, really difficult. What about these 8,000 people here that voted that don't live in Georgia? What about these 11,360 people not eligible? What he did this exact routine in his um, in uh, Absolute Proof, that movie he made, quote unquote, that documentary, supposed documentary. It was just complete nonsense. He, he made these claims like you've got a, a whole bunch of things like. Hillary Clinton bust in like 
10,000 immigrants from Mexico and then they voted in the election. It's just nonsense, all of it. It's like, how can anybody honestly believe this? It's insane. So anyways, uh, none of it was true. But Mike Lindell believes it, so he's going to spread it around. So anyway. What about these 3,000? Those numbers came from Brad Rassenberger. All he said was, you know, check out any of these two, and he wins the election. It was 11,780 votes that they say Donald Trump lost by. But he had a list of over 100,000 people, right. names okay. that couldn't have voted because they didn't live there. And Rass Nonsense. It's just not true. He's lying here, and he, he has to know that. Rassenberger said, those are the wrong numbers. Donald Trump said, well, where'd we get these? Donald Trump's lawyer said, sir, we got them from Brad Rassenberger. And he said, well, when are you going to give us the real numbers? And Brad never did because those were the real numbers. Oh. That phone call is nonsense. They had the real numbers all along. He's just completely making this up. Yeah, that, that was ridiculous, dude. Michael Lindell is an embarrassment. Is he ever going to come back to reality? I doubt it. He's going to be stuck in fantasy land forever, right? Oh, tell me what you think.